Hello readers, this is part 3 of matrices and determinant series. In this part, we are going to discuss equality of matrices. Let's start with this definition. Two matrices A equal to A sub ij with an order m by n and B equal to B sub ij with an order m by n are said to be equal if their corresponding elements are equal. That's A sub ij equal to B sub ij for all 1 less or equal to i less or equal to m and 1 less or equal to j less or equal to n. As you know, the subscript i stands for rho and j stands for a column where a particular element is located. From this definition of a sub ij equal to b sub ij, we can figure out that two matrices are equal only when elements with identical subscripts are equal. Let me illustrate on this definition by using two matrices expressed in the form of a sub ij and b sub ij. Here are the matrices. If the first matrix with an order 3 by 4 expressed in terms of A sub ij is equal to the second matrix of the same order but expressed in the form of B sub ij, then first row, first column and entry at the left, that's A sub 1, 1, equal to first row, first column and entry at the right, that's B sub 1, 1. If we analyze these two elements, their subscripts are the same, that's 1, 1. First row, second column and entry at the left, that's A sub 1, 2, equal to first row, second column and entry at the right, that's B sub 1, 2. Here also, we can easily understand that the elements with similar subscripts are equal. Thus, in equalizing two matrices, what we have to do is that just equalize elements with similar subscripts, that's A sub 1, 3, equal to B sub 1, 3, A sub 1, 4, equal to B sub 1, 4. The same is true for row two elements of the two matrices, that's a sub 2 1 equal to B sub 2 1, A sub 2 2 equal to B sub 2 2, A sub 2 3 equal to B sub 2 3, and A sub 2 4 equal to B sub 2 4. Following the same logic, row 3 elements are equalized as A sub 3 1 equal to B sub 3 1, A sub 3 2 equal to B sub 3 2, A sub 3 3 equal to B sub 3 3, and A sub 3 4 equal to B sub 3 4. Knowing this fact will help us to solve different problems concerning equality of matrices. Let's see this example. If this left-hand 4 by 4 matrix is equal to this right-hand side 4 by 4 matrix, then find the values of x, y, and z. To find the values of these three variables, we need to have at least three equations. Let's use the concept of equality of matrices to form these three equations. If we examine elements of first row, 5 at the left equal to 5 at the right, 3 at the left-hand side matrix equal to 3 at the right-hand side matrix, the first unknown that's 2x equal to 3y plus 4z. Why these two equations are equal? The reason is simple, because both are located at first row, third column and position. The last element of row 1, that is z0 as the left-hand side matrix, is equal to z0 as the right-hand side matrix. When we come to row 2, this one is equal to this right-hand side 1. This second row, second column and position, that's x plus y is equal to 5, which is the second equation. 4 equal to 4, and 6 equal to 6. Third row elements, y plus z equal to 2x minus z. This is the third equation. The remaining elements of this third row and the fourth row in this left-hand side matrix are equal to the corresponding elements of this right-hand side matrix. Now, we already formed the three equations, so let's realize them in the form that help us to reduce the variables from 3 to 2 and solve them simultaneously. Out of these three equations, Equation 2 contains only two variables. Thus, it's simple to write one variable in terms of the other variable. In this particular case, let's write y in terms of x, meaning we can take x to the right side of equality side and we will find y equal to 5 minus x. Bear in mind, positive sign turns to negative sign when we take it to the opposite sides of equality side. Again, let's rewrite equation 1 and equation 3 in the form of addition and subtraction that equal to 0. Thus, in equation 1, let's bring the right-hand side expression to the left-hand side of the equality sign, that is, 2x. When we bring 3y to the left side of equality, it becomes minus 3y. And when we bring plus 4z to the left side of equality, it becomes minus 4z, which is equal to nothing is left at the right-hand side, meaning it is 0. Again, in equation 3, let's bring this right-hand side expression to the left-hand side of equality sign, that is, y. When we bring 2x to the left, it becomes minus 2x. And when we bring negative z to the left, it becomes plus z. z plus z equal to 2z. Then, nothing is left at the right-hand side of equality. 
meaning it is equal to zero. At this stage, we can substitute five minus x in place of y in equation two and equation three, just to reduce the number of variables from three to two. Let's start from equation one, that's two x minus three times y means five minus x minus four z equal to zero. This implies two x minus three times five is negative 15, minus three times negative x is plus three x, minus four z equal to zero. This implies 2x plus 3x equal to 5x. Let's rearrange negative 15 and minus 4z. That's minus 4z minus 15 equal to 0. When we come to equation 3, 5 minus x in place of y minus 2x plus 2z equal to 0. This implies 5 minus x minus 2x is minus 3x plus 2z equal to 0. At this moment, we have two equations and two unknowns. To solve them simultaneously, let's make the coefficient of either variable x or variable y equal. To make the coefficient of variable x equal, we have to multiply equation 1 by the coefficients of variable x in equation 2, that's 3, and equation 2 by the coefficient of variable x in equation 1, that's 5. If we need to make the coefficient of variable z in the two equations equal, what we are expected to do is just to multiply equation 2 by 2, because 4, which is a coefficient of z in equation 1, is a multiple of Two. So the shorter part is making the coefficient of z equal because we are expected to multiply equation 2 by a constant 2. Alongside multiplying each entity in equation 2 by 2, it's important to rearrange the positions of each entity in the manner that help us to arrange like terms vertically. That's to mean that in the first equation, variable x comes first, followed by variable z, and then the constant. So it's important to arrange equation 2 outputs in similar fashion. That's 2 times negative 3x equal to negative 6x, 2 times positive 2z equal to plus 4z, 2 times 5 equal to 10, which is equal to 2 times 0 equal to 0. Now, what we have to do is just to add these two equations. That's 5x plus negative 6x equal to negative x, negative 4z plus 4z equal to 0. So no need to add 0 because adding 0 doesn't change the result. Negative 15 plus 10 equal to negative 5, and 0 plus 0 equal to 0. This implies x equal to negative 5. Once we find the value of x, we can back substitute it to solve for z and y. We can use either of these two equations to solve for z. For this case, let's use the upper equation, that's 5x minus 4z minus 15 equal to 0. Substituting negative 5 in place of x, we will find... 5 times x is negative 5 minus 4z minus 15 equal to 0. 5 times negative 5 is negative 25 minus 4z minus 15 equal to 0. This implies negative 4z. Negative 25 minus 15 means negative 40, which is equal to 0. Taking negative 40 to the right side of equality and dividing by the coefficient of z, we will find z equal to 40 divided by the coefficient of z is negative 4. 40 divided by negative 4 is equal to negative 10. In equation 2, we figure out that y is equal to 5 minus x. Substituting negative 5 in place of x, we will find y is equal to 5 minus negative 5, which is equal to 5. Minus negative 5 means plus 5. So 5 plus 5 equal to 10. Therefore, the values of the three variables are x equal to negative 5, y is equal to 10, and z equal to negative 10. If we have time, it's always good to check the correctness of the solution just by substituting the values in place of the variables. So let's check it. First row elements at the left hand side matrix, that's 5, 3, 2x means 2 times the value of x, that's negative 5 and 0. Second row elements, 1, x plus y means the sum of the value of x and the value of y, that's negative 5 plus 10, 4 and 6. Third row elements, x plus z means the sum of the values of y and z, that's 10 plus, the value of z is negative 10, 12, 10 and 4. Fourth row elements as they are, that's 0, 3, 7 and 2. When we come to the right hand side matrix, first row elements, 5, 3, 3y three plus 4z means 3 times the value of y plus 4 times the value of z, that's 3 times 10 plus 4 times negative 10 and 0. Second row elements as they are, that's 1, 5, 4, and 6. Third row elements, 2x minus z means 
2 times the value of x minus the value of z, that's 2 times negative 5 minus negative 10, 12, 10, and 4. Four row elements as they are, that's 0, 3, 7, and 2. So let's simplify the additions, subtractions, and multiplications starting from the left hand side matrix. Row 1 elements, 5, 3, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, and 0. Row 2 elements, 1, negative 5 plus 10 is 5, 4 and 6. Row 3 elements, 10 plus negative 10 is 0, 12, 10 and 4. Row 4 elements as they are. When we move to the right hand side matrix, row 1 elements, 5, 3, 3 times 10 is 30, plus 4 times negative 10 is negative 40. 30 plus negative 40 gives us negative 10. And the fourth element, that is 0. Row 2 elements, 1, 5, 4, and 6. Row 3 elements, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Minus negative 10 is plus 10. Negative 10 plus 10 gives us 0, 12, 10, and 4. Row 4 elements, 0, 3, 7, and 2. Each and every element at the left-hand side matrix is equal to the corresponding elements at the right-hand side matrix. Therefore, the two matrices are equal. You may use the different techniques to solve for the value of x, y, and z, but the final answer must be the same. By this, I wrap up this episode. Please subscribe, like, and share the page. Bye-bye.